KD was traded to the Suns, everyone thought they'd be instant contenders. Fast forward to today, they're one of the biggest super team failures ever. So what went wrong? Their championship count remains at zero, which is something the owners wanted to change by signing one of the most expensive trios in NBA history, and they're not happy about it. Hello again, basketball fans, and welcome back to Hoop Vision. Today, we're talking about KD's Suns and the possible scenarios the future holds for them. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It takes only a second, costs nothing, and it will give you access to more basketball stories. The suffering of the Phoenix Suns begins in 2004, along with the Steve Nash era. With it came the hope that the team from Arizona could win its first title, but the total opposite happened. In Steve's eight seasons spent with the franchise, Phoenix managed to reach the playoffs five times, including three Western Conference Finals, in which they lost each time. Two of those were to the future champions, in 2005 to the San Antonio Spurs, and in 2010 to the LA Lakers. What particularly hurt the fans was the fact that despite so much talent in the roster, they always fell short. Some of Nash's teammates were Stoudemire, Sean Marion, Joe Johnson, Grant Hill, and even Shaq was there for a season. Even though he was in his later years, the Suns were playing very nice basketball. Then Steve Nash went to the Lakers, Stoudemire to the Knicks, and everything fell apart. The franchise was at the bottom for years, until a glimpse of hope appeared after drafting Devin Booker. Of course, no one expected him to be immediately productive, but everyone pointed to him being a fantastic offensive player. When they drafted Ayton and added Chris Paul to the roster, they reached the NBA Finals in their first playoff run together. However, even that wasn't enough. The Bucks were better and crushed Phoenix's dreams of finally lifting the Larry O'Brien trophy. The front office tried everything thing, but they had no good ideas. DeAndre Ayton was sent to Portland, while Chris Paul continued his career in Golden State. Losing to Dallas in the 2022 West Semis was a sign that the team needed changing, and on top of that, the Luka memes were getting unbearable. So we know what happened next. KD landed in Phoenix after a massive trade that involved four teams and probably changed the course of the current NBA, but more on that in a moment. First, the Suns got Durant from Brooklyn and TJ Warren from Indiana, while in exchange, the Nets got Mikhail Bridges, Cameron Johnson, Juan Pablo Vol four first round picks from Phoenix and two second round picks from Milwaukee. Talk about the assets. Also, the Bucks got Jay Crowder for their picks, while Indiana got George Hill, Sergi Ibaka, Jordan Nuora, and three future second round picks from Milwaukee. Here's why this trade was so important for the league. If the Suns hadn't traded for KD, Mikal Bridges wouldn't be on the Brooklyn team. The Nets could not make that recent trade with New York, and the question is whether the Knicks would have such strong chemistry in the roster that they have now. If Bridges had stayed with the Suns, maybe New York could eventually have gotten him in a direct trade but that's already too hypothetical. Besides New York, if you remember, Bradley Beal came to Phoenix in a trade for Chris Paul, who was immediately sent by the Wizards to Golden State. They got Jordan Poole in return and came up with the idea that they could build around him and Kyle Kuzma, which was not the best idea when you think about it. But that moment was probably when they decided to not keep Chris Stapps Horzingis in the future and accidentally contributed to one of the most powerful rosters the league has seen in a while. It's ironic that by wanting to form a super team, the Suns helped the Celtics create one. Their intention was to do the same as the Miami Heat in 2011 and the Golden State Warriors in 2016, but things went south and their experiment most closely resembles the Lakers from the 2012 through 13 season. A great trio on paper, but poor results on the court. Actually, in the first season with the Suns, KD was not bad at all in the playoffs. In the first round, they beat the Clippers 4-1, then lost 4-2 to the future champion Denver Nuggets. No shame in that. If you take into account the short time they've spent together, KD fit in great with the team and was very productive with 28.4 points per game. What was unusual was that he played over 40 minutes minutes almost every game, which is not the best for a player of his age. However, the first season is not the main reason why the Suns found themselves under attack from the media. At the beginning of the 23 and 24 season, there were a lot of high expectations and hopes for their roster. CP3 was no longer the main playmaker, so everyone thought Booker would be more productive now that the ball was supposed to be in his hands even more. However, he didn't turn out to be a great facilitator. He's a great player, but he needs to do more to make people around him better too. Beal was nowhere near what people expected him to be, and the injuries didn't help either. First, during the regular season, they didn't look anywhere near the offensive machine they should have been. People expected them to be unstoppable, but the old wisdom that basketball is played with only one ball proved true. You can't bring in three ISO players and expect things to go smoothly. And not only that, they have already put themselves in a win-now situation considering that they don't have their picks until 2029. Plus, having three superstars in the team made it impossible for them to bring in more solid role players, so this plan was not exactly among the most thought out. They probably thought that at least two of them would give 40 points each night, so the 
the lack of other things would be compensated somehow. However, that's not how basketball is played. With a record of 49 and 33, they barely avoided the play-ins. And what followed was not expected by anyone. Everyone knew that Minnesota was the better team, but hardly anyone could have predicted such a sweep, especially after Edwards' behavior in public. Anyone would get extra motivation from watching the 22-year-old bounce back after wiping out your franchise, but not the Suns. No one in that team had the strength to make a turnaround because they probably saw for themselves how bad their situation was. Imagine wanting to rest your stars. This Suns team doesn't have another rotation. If Grayson Allen is your best player when the stars aren't on the court, you're in big trouble. As for the title, there are no chances even in theory if things stay the way they are. The worst thing is that Phoenix won the last two games against Minnesota, but the playoffs showed why they're a different planet compared to the regular season. Every matchup looked dominant for the Wolves. Edwards was brutal on offense, and KAT, Rudy, and Reed weren't lacking motivation. This Phoenix team will not be enough against any serious team from the West, as the current situation in the league is such that superstars are no longer enough. Depth is what distinguishes champions from those who face first round exits. With all this in mind, the question is, what's next for the Suns? Should they repeat everything one more time or trade and go with something different? There is a scenario in which KD could go to Houston and the Suns get back the picks they gave to the Nets, which might be the best solution for them given that the championship is not a realistic option from this point of view. The West is getting stronger every year, and Memphis, Golden State, Sacramento, and maybe even San Antonio now that they have CP3 will return to playoffs contention next season. The problem for the Suns is that Booker is still in his prime, so trading KD and Beal would leave him alone without a chance to do something concrete in the conference. However, the two of them would certainly not go for a small number of trade assets. If some good role players and picks landed in Phoenix, then a much better team could be built around Booker than he had until until now. It's too early to rebuild, but that's not an impossible option either. If the front office decides to make another attempt with this trio, and the next season turns out to be a big failure as well, it is not excluded that Booker could also be on the trade block and pack his bags for the trip out of Arizona. Just imagine what could be attained for Durant, Beal, and Booker, almost the entire franchise. This would completely change Phoenix's current position. They lost their future to make a super team, but with this move, they would completely regain it. Regardless of what they do with the stars at their disposal, it is certain that Phoenix will feel the consequences of their ambitions for a long time. A sweep of Minnesota will hurt for quite some time until the team owners learn that it's not enough to throw money on the table and demand titles. If KD really goes to Houston, it'll bring them significantly closer to the playoffs, which would automatically mean one spot less for one of the teams from this season. Unfortunately, someone will have to lose, but the ones who surely win are us, basketball fans who will watch a fun, interesting, and competitive season. And that's it for today, dear friends. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments below what do you think will happen to the Suns and whether they can come back from a horrible season. Thank you for watching and growing this channel. Make sure you don't miss out on more NBA stories by hitting that subscribe button. See you in the next one.